Beach vacation, golf vacation. Beach vacation, golf vacation. Why not do both? Jacksonville Beach, that's the spot. Traveling Golfer is gonna take you to all of the great golf courses close to the beach and the attractions that make it fun when you're not hitting the ball around. Stick with us on this episode of The Traveling Golfer. Before I get to the golf course, I'm gonna work on my bunker play. One moment changes everything. Distance, precision, decided in a microsecond. So reduce your ball spin and get the most performance at impact with four yards more. A next-gen golf tee proven by pros and players like you. The unique durable design flexes at contact, reducing ball spin, giving you tighter control and more distance. So change your game and get four yards more. Brought to you by Greenkeepers. Golf smart. Queens Harbor Yacht and Country Club. Yachts to the left, Country Club to the right, and right beside me, General Manager Bob Ewing. Eye-popping sights no matter where you go on the property. You know, it's incredible. When I first got here, uh, I thought exactly like you did. Coming around and seeing the area and the golf course, you don't quite understand how good it is here in the Jacksonville Beach area. Yeah. Mark McCumber Design. He has quite a footprint in the greater Jacksonville area, a lot of golf courses, and Queens Harbor is a good members course. It has elasticity. You can satisfy a lot of different types of golfers on this course. Yeah, what's really great about the five sets of tees here, and that we're going to be putting in a sixth of that so we can address our super seniors. So it plays anywhere from 4,800 from the forward tees to 7,200 from the back tees. And water carries are very indicative based on where you play from, which tees you play from. And it's the kind of golf that I like because, yes, you're going to lose balls in the water, but you're gonna, not going to be looking for balls in all the junk a lot of places. It's trimmed back nicely. Yeah, well, being around homes, uh, obviously we have very little natural areas. We do have a few. Um, but you're right, when you play here, it's pretty straightforward. The landing areas are relatively generous here. So even a guy like you that sprays it around a bit <laughs> is going to find the fairway more times often than not. You're right. Now, uh, the one thing I did notice is smaller than usual greens throughout the golf course. Yeah, you know, the green and the green complexes, are they vary from hole to hole. There's a few here that are very, very large, six, 7,000 square feet. But there are a few here that are more postage stamp size. And I think it, it, it's based on the way McCumber designed the course. Par threes are relatively short, but smaller greens. Par fours and fives, larger fairways and larger greens. So it does get a little bit of different flavor as you go around the golf course. Biggest danger is getting too overcome by the views so that you're not concentrating on your golf shot. It really yeah. is a picturesque course. Yeah, it really is because it, it, it encompasses both the intercoastal and some marsh areas. So when you put those two together and then you have our holes that sit back within the tree line, uh, you just get a little bit of everything here. It's like Southern Florida and South Carolina all rolled up into one. 17 is a great hole that turns to the left. It's a par five, but what's tricky is your tee ball is it's a very intermediate club and it's all positioning and the second shot is also positioned because then you have water on the left hand side so it's a there's several holes like that number four is another one it's and 14 4 14 and 17 are three holes that you really have to think your way through and our par threes in general are very strategic in play so if you, if you don't come here and think about your shot a little bit you can get into some trouble hole 14 water left dog leg left trees left Think before you hit. So, number seven, a short par three over marshland, uh, but you've got to be accurate with it because the green complex is, uh, is perched up in the air a little bit. So, exactly right. If you're just off by a little bit, it's going to reject the shot. Yeah, no doubt. And I think that's part of McCumber's design, right, is to make sure the visual is good, but it's also deceiving. Yeah. So if you don't hit the ball the right distance, you're definitely going to be in some trouble. It's time for our Stracoline putt of the day. 
And this is three putt territory. 60 feet from the hole, elevation, huge break. You can walk it off. You can look at it from both sides. You can look at it from the side or you can just trust the Stracoline guide. director for Club Corp in the Jacksonville area. Correct. And Deer Creek, one of your beauties. Yes. Tom, this golf course has been here since 1989. Some of the characteristics of it. It is a traditional Florida tree-lined golf course, but the unique thing, it has water on 17 of 18 holes. It's got some wildlife areas that between, uh, uh, between the holes that are breathtaking. It was 285 acres carved out of swamp, much like uh, the famous TPC uh, sawgrass. Number 18, since we're standing in front of this green here, is really something uh, to remember. It's a par five, a real risk reward par five. That's correct. And when it was built in uh, 1989, 490 yards was maybe a little bit long for a par five. Today, a lot of the guys here they're literally hitting eight and nine irons into this green from the championship tees. Here's the toughest question ever, yes. anybody's ever going to ask you. Right. Exactly how many golf balls are in there? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Thousands. Oh, right. Thousands. We do quite well on selling golf balls well, here. I'll bet. Yeah. I'll bet. A number of the par three holes right. certainly are memorable. Uh, you have one in particular that you like. Uh, full of really good par threes. Number 15 is water right and water short. So for a golfer that's going to cut the ball or fade the ball or slice the ball, I don't like to use that terminology, uh, it's, it gobbles up maybe more golf balls than number 18. A uh, great hole anywhere from 120 to 180. Kendall Mills, membership director. Certainly don't hurt the setting any. It's great to have you Thank with you us. Thank you very much. And it is great to be at a beautiful club that is part of the Club Corp community of 300 golf courses? Over 300 golf courses, that's yeah, correct. across the country. So even though this is a private club, it is open to play by anyone who is a member at any of the Club Corp properties. That's correct. But it's also open to private events. Actually, we do. We host many tournaments and golf outings uh, in the Jacksonville community every year. Yeah, part of the community part of this great Jacksonville golf community really is thriving right now. I see a beautiful mix of pine trees, live oaks, and palm trees on the property and some water. This seems like a rather idyllic setting, not only to play golf in, but also to live in. That's correct. The course is actually situated in 285 acres of wildlife and natural areas. So you're constantly surrounded by, you know, um, animals, live uh, birds, wildlife, very beautiful setting here. Our friends at Florida's First Coast of Golf, of course, are very closely related to Queens Harbor. They send players there. And you have a special relationship also. We do. Um, because we're part of the Club Court family, we have a Jacksonville community, which includes Queens Harbor Yacht and Country Club, Marsh Creek Country Club, and Deer Creek. So we kind of have the slogan, join one, play three, here in Jacksonville. Sounds like a good deal to me. It's a great deal. Creating a revolutionary product starts by asking, what if? What if we loaded every inch with game-changing innovation? What if we had a flight tuning system to control ball flight, roll face and cup face technologies for explosive power, slipstream sole technology for more speed, and dual carbon tech with eight adjustable loft settings? And what if all this technology and performance costs significantly less than the competition? Exotics EXS by Tour Edge. Pound for pound, nothing else comes close. Drive for show, but putt for dough. Hi, this is Jim Stracka, inventor of the Stracka line. Stracka line is used by touring pros and top college players every week. Now you can get Stracka line for your home course. 
For just $1,500, Stracoline will come to your facility and laser scan each green on your course. We will collect 2 million data points per green. Imagine, you will finally be able to read your putts accurately. Go to Stracoline.com to schedule your course today. Dave Reese is president of Florida's first coast of golf, a coast that is pretty famous, well, for one reason, you have a pretty good tournament every year. Best players experience in the in the country for best tournament yeah. experience, yeah, for sure. But you also have a wonderful playground of golf. Tony, we've got 68 courses in all in, in our 120 miles of coastline, so um, the Jacksonville Airport, you can really be from the concourse to the golf course in 15 minutes, depending on where, where you choose to pick. Because there are three or four different distinct areas that you could focus on and plan your golf trip around. That's this right. one, Jacksonville Beach, is a little bit different. Well, Jacksonville and Jacksonville Beach is definitely in the, in the hub of the, the entire region. Jacksonville Beach, is, you've got great lodging, accommodation, uh, Courtyard Marriott. Right on the beach. Man, right on the beach, you guys stayed there. One Ocean Resort for the upscale experience and just the entertainment districts all over, peppered throughout the, the beach. And you've got, I know you've seen a couple clubs on this show, but others uh, worth a mention is Windsor Park Golf Club, great Arthur Hills um, design. You gotta bring it. It is a very difficult golf course. Jacksonville Beach Golf Club just finished renovating in 2018. Uh, they put $2 million into it and revamped the entire course. That's a great club for the high handicapper. Uh, so, you know, if you choose to bring your family and, and maybe it's a husband wife, it's, it's a great option. Bent Creek, a little further of a drive, uh, but that place is always in great shape. Uh, very few houses around it. It's just a great, great player's experience. Each area has its own specialties. In this particular cluster though, you have the two different experiences of the beach, they've got the beach activities during the day, and then the nightlife along Atlantic Beach, Neptune Beach, and Jacksonville Beach. That's right. Restaurants and clubs, a lot of fun. Love it. Love it. That's where I live, uh, uh, the Atlantic Beach uh, Town Center. For those who want the more cosmopolitan experience, mm -hmm. you can stay right downtown in downtown Jacksonville and still access all the courses we're talking about in this show. Oh, downtown Jacksonville is beautiful. I mean, the St. John's River cuts right through the middle of it. You've got a great lodging option right down there, um, Doubletree by Hilton, downtown Jacksonville, right on the river. Roos Chris Steakhouse, right in the belly of it. And then you're surrounded by loads of entertainment districts in San Marco and Riverside. That, uh, that they have loads of great you know, local local establishments, and that's that's where I'm, that's where I'm most proud of is our area and the local establishment. Yeah, uh, you know that has been a trend across the country, rebuilding the downtown areas, reinfusing it with business, uh, mm -hmm. bringing tourists in, and I would have to say that Jacksonville's right at the lead of that whole effort. And Mr. Khan, with the, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, is playing a big part of that. And um, it's, it, I, I can't wait to see how it, how it develops. When you're in the Jacksonville area, impossible not to talk a little bit about the Jacksonville Jaguars NFL. They're very proud of their team. And they're proud of it. In the pro shop at Hidden Hills, we're with Russ Libby, PGA member, general manager, owner of Hidden Hills and a member of the North Florida PGA Hall of Fame. Great to be in your neck of the woods. Tony, welcome. It's great to have you here. Yeah, the Jags in the pro shop. Get a little Jag well, swag. Well, we, we try to represent the best we can. We love them and we've had our ups and downs this year, but uh, we're still Jags fans here yeah. for sure. Hidden Hills Golf Course, mm -hmm. a rich history. Absolutely. Original course goes all the way back to the 60s, designed by Dave Gordon. Mm -hmm and you had a PGA Tour event here. We did, we sure did. 1966, the course opened its doors. We had the tournament here in 70, 71, and 72. So we had uh, Don January, Gary Player, Tony Jacklin, three Hall of Famers win the championship right here at Hidden Hills. In those days, it was known as the Greater Jacksonville Open. Eventually became 
The Players Championship. The Players, right. That's right. <laughs> At TPC. Later on, Arnold Palmer, who played in the Greater Jacksonville, loved the original golf course. A major redesign and rerouting took place, and this golf course now is an Arnold Palmer signature course. Much different from the original, but really a wonderful golf course. It, Tony, it, it's outstanding. You'll see how dramatic the elevation changes are out here, the rolling fairways, the oaks, the pines. Uh, you have every golf club in your bag you'll probably use during the round because we have side hill lies, uphill, downhill. So for Florida, you know, typically Florida flat, uh, that's not the case out here. In, in North Florida, we are really a unique golf course, really the only one in town that can boast some of the elevation changes that we have here. I read somewhere the first tee is the highest spot in the county. It used to be. It used to be. Uh, ah, it's, it's, it got flattened. Oh, no. Yeah, they put a road up there, Tony. <laughs> but it's still high. This is one of the highest areas in all of Jacksonville. And uh, you can see it. You stand on the first and tenth tees and you look down at the fairway. It's beautiful. A lot of wildlife out here. Foxes, geese, uh, eagles, bald eagles. You name it. We've got it. And uh, it's really a treat to come out here and play this golf course. And yes, you're right. It's, an, it's a signature golf course. Arnold Palmer's signature. And we're very proud to have that moniker on this golf course. And from the looks of it, from the second you drive in to every single detail on this golf course, it looks like it's the most private of private, but it really is semi-private and anybody can play the golf course at a very affordable rate. Absolutely. Now we've been open to the public now for just about two years. And we're excited about the fact, you know, we, we made a business model change here a couple of years back. The club had been private for a good number of years. And we like to say, yes, public access, private experience here for our golfing friends. And we've got a lot of friends from all over the Southeast and all over the country now coming here to experience it. And we're proud to show it off and we're proud to take good care of them too. When in Jacksonville Beach, a must stop. Hidden Hills, get the history of the course, talk to a Hall of Famer himself, <laughs> the North Florida PGA Hall of Fame, Russ Libby. Dave, once again, Florida's first coast of golf is the entry for our viewers to all of the courses in the area and a diverse experience. Yeah, we've got a great balance of semi-private, private, and public golf courses that will just blow your mind. It's such a golf-rich region. And you can find it all on florida-golf.org. There you go, florida-golf.org, the website, the entree to all of this, and the great golf experience, the golf trip in Jacksonville Beach, Jacksonville downtown, whichever you choose, and all the golf and the activities so close by. Absolutely, I mean, you, there's not a place you can stay with without 15 to 20 courses within a 15, 20 minute drive. All right, Florida's first coast of golf. We're on the river, rolling on the river. Michael Corrigan, CEO of Visit Jacksonville, the St. John's River. The big river, it's a beautiful river. Thank you, Tony, we love it. It's the center point of our community. Yeah, I think I can understand why there's a lot going on here. You've got TIAA Bank Field in our background here. The Jaguars play. And of course, along the river here, there are hotels and other restaurants. So there's a, a lot going on right in this area within walking distance. Oh, sure. Tony, once you get downtown Jacksonville, you can do everything without having to get in your car again. Now, if you do have to go a little farther than walking distance, there's a river taxi. There, there is a river taxi. They can take you to some of the other attractions. I tell you what, if you get downtown Jacksonville, find the river taxi. It's going back and forth across the river. It is a great way to see downtown Jacksonville. Now, in the general area there are a lot of other things going on some of them are golf related but not necessarily with a golf course exactly a uh, top golf's a great example we have a wonderful shopping area known as st john's town center here in jacksonville and uh, located at st john's town center is a top golf location so uh, even if uh, one of you wants to go shopping and the other wants to get some golf in we can do both at the same time we've been through all the beautiful golf courses a lot of them have a good bit of water it's florida you're going to lose a few golf balls there's a place in that center to get golf balls, I know that. <laughs> yeah, there's a PGA Superstore right there in the town center. So you can lose your golf balls in the morning, head to the town center and get some lunch and, and pick up some more golf balls for your outing the next day. Restocking. This is very different to have 
such a cosmopolitan city so close to such a beautiful beach area. Yeah, Jacksonville's a huge city. It's 840 square miles. So there's a lot of different experiences you can have when you come to visit Jacksonville. Um, you can spend the entire week here in downtown and see everything we have here. Or you can spend a week, a week at the beach and do the same thing. But a lot of people, Tony, they experience both of it. A little bit of beach, a little bit of river. Tony, uh, if you come to Jacksonville, I'd encourage you to try the Ale Trail. That's, we got 15 local breweries that, that are on the Ale Trail. I'd encourage you to get on and experience many of them. Um, a couple of them I'll mention is the Green Room is one of them, and then another one right near TIAA Bank Field is Intuition. It's, uh, you overlook the, the, the football field as you uh, drink your local beers at that location. Perfect. I'm in. I'm in for the Intuition. I'm in for the Ale Trail. Well, Michael, I could stand here by the river and talk to you all day, but I can't. My taxi's waiting. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. To Duval. To Duval. We're coming to the end of the day and the end of the latest episode of The Traveling Golfer. Jacksonville Beach, a golf vacation, a beach vacation and a lively town that presents a lot to do when you're not chasing the ball around the golf course. Special thanks to everybody from Florida's first coast of golf and after Jacksonville Beach we'll open up more of the golf world to you on further travels with the traveling golfer. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe courtesy of Antigua the leader in modern golf apparel. Tour Edge is the official equipment sponsor of The Traveling Golfer.